recording. Okay, good morning. We're still wearing the tefillin. We just finished the davening. How are you doing, everyone who's online with us? And I'm going to start Tanya. Charlie, you ready? Okay. Today is the second day of Shvat, January 12th. And we're we're continuing and concluding chapter 15 in Tanya. Uh, before we begin, I want to just read to you a quick text. I don't know if you see me. Hope you do. I want to read you a quick text here. Thought it was important. Thought it was important. Here we go. Goes like this. If I had any doubts as to whether I should be, uh, you know, it's it's not so easy all the time uh, making sure you hit the record button and, and getting everything set up. So guys, listen to this. A good Chaydesh Rabbi, listen to this, guys. You have no idea how much chizuk I get from listening to your daily tiny class. I feel like it was written for me personally. And that's part of what we said but. In the beginning of the Tanya, the Dalta Rebbe says, I can't possibly meet each person and future generations. It's as if you're sitting and talking and discussing and gleaning advice from the Dalta Rebbe one-on-one. And he writes, I feel like it was written for me personally. It speaks directly to me. I don't know how I would be able to go on without it. The struggle is real. We talk about the struggle of the of the uh, Benini. I feel blessed that I committed to this from the very beginning. Have a great day. So. We really appreciate that. We know you're listening. And uh, and um, I, I try not to pay too much attention to how many views we get because it may uh, it may uh, puff me up a little. So I try to keep away from that. But I do notice that there's quite a bit of views, more than I would expect. And hopefully people are learning, Tyra. People are, um, people are, even if we touch one person, it's like an entire world. But at the same time, again, that one person, and it spreads to two and three and five. And, you know, yesterday's time, he was viewed by 40 people. I was shocked. I was like, I couldn't believe it. And hopefully, you know, we're making a dent. We all have our job to do, and we all do it in our own way. Right, Adam? Okay. Let's learn today in memory of Adam's mother. Adam Schneider lost his mother. He's sitting Shiva. Her name is Yehudis Bas Avram. Her neshama should have an aliyah. Now, in today's lesson, going the extra mile, not necessarily through a tunnel, but just going an extra mile, we'll see, we'll soon see. I'm going to reveal some tunnel secrets at the end of the lesson today. Going the extra mile may may be quantitatively small. What does it mean? You go the extra mile. Well, it could be an extra foot after you went the full mile. There might be one extra step but it makes all the difference. If 100 is the acceptable norm, 101 is the challenge to reach beyond one's nature. The Talmud has a statement that says as follows. He who serves Hashem refers to somebody who studies and reviews his studies 101 times. And it continues and it says, he who serves him not refers to one who reviews his studies only 100 times. Can someone close the door over there? Paul, if you don't mind, thank you. It seems strange that if you study 101 times, then it's, you're serving Hashem. But if you studied only a hundred times, you're not serving God. So the Altarab goes on to explain. In those days, it was absolutely normal for everyone to review everything a hundred times. It would be, for example, if you learned Chitas today, if you learned the basic Chomish, you said to Hillim, you learn the tiny of the day, you're doing your quota. You're not doing anything extra, but you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So to review a hundred times was not out of the norm. 
That was the normal thing that everybody did. They learned everything a hundred times. And it was second nature. As we learned yesterday, when things become second nature, you can get accustomed to it. Well, that's exactly what it means. It becomes second nature. You're not putting in much effort. People that are used to coming to show and they say, I've gone to Minyan almost every single day for 30 years. They're not putting in effort. They do it almost in their sleep. Okay? I mean, I'll speak for myself. You know, it just it's not always easy, but you, you do it. You just do it. You get used to it. The Talmud gives an analogy, and he says as follows. There was a market of donkey drivers, and the drivers would charge one zuz for ten parsa, which is a Persian mile. But they demanded two zuzim to go 11 miles. I'm sorry, 11 parsa. The 11th mile exceeded their customary practice. It's like a taxi driver. If he says, if you take, if I go to the airport, there's a standard fare. That's a standard fare, 25 bucks, whatever it is. Maybe 50 bucks today, right? Starge, airport, Newark, back, and that's it. Oh, you want me to go to Brooklyn? It's the same 22 miles, but I got to go, even if it's tolls and everything else. No, no, I got to, I, I don't like going to Brooklyn. I don't like going through, you know, Manhattan or whatever it is. Even if it's the same amount of mileage or if it's a little bit further, that's going to cost you double the amount. Why? This is this is what it means. One hundred and one reviews, one hundred and one times, which is beyond the normal capacity. One hundred and one is beyond the normal practice to which the student has been accustomed since his childhood, and it's equivalent to all the previous one hundred. The one extra time, it's just as much effort as the 100 times that he put in prior. In fact, its quality surpasses them in its greater strength and power so that it is only this one extra revision with, which entitles the student to now be called he who serves Hashem. Again, page 80. So now, why? In order to change his natural habit, he must arouse within him a great love of Hashem by contemplating Hashem's greatness. He goes about his regular day and he does everything just the way he does normal. How are you going to dig down deep and bring out an extra love of Hashem? You're not, because you're just going to do things the way you, you became accustomed to it. Every single day, it becomes natural. It becomes by rote, robotic. This is what you do. Okay, maybe the davening is not such a good example, but when you drive to work, you don't think about the directions anymore. You don't think about, it's It's almost like you barely even look at the roads. You almost do it by heart, right? All right? You're doing something else completely entirely. Or Well, not not always, no. Because if you're going somewhere, if you're sent on a sales call or if you have a meeting in a new place, now you're nervous. You're going to leave a little earlier. You're going to check the ways five times. You're, you're, you're checking the roads. We, I went yesterday, I went to somewhere in Union. And, you know, you're, you're, you're checking the, you don't want to be distracted. You want to get there on time. I got there a few minutes early. You're checking the way you got. There. I got there. I didn't know exactly where I was supposed to go. I called, uh, which door do I go in? You know what I'm saying? But when you go somewhere, look, you're you going to your office every single day. You don't even think twice. Just walk in and you can almost not notice anybody. So if you come to Dominic and you have the, almost the exact same mindset every single day, it's going to become, you know, you just by road. Not by road. Yeah, yeah. In other words, automatic. Automatic. It just becomes natural. It's just, it's habit. But what if, what if we would tell you, how are you going to have an extra love of Hashem? You have to do something different. You have to pick every single day a piece of the davening that you didn't think about yesterday, the words that didn't penetrate 
in your mind and regurgitate and think about it and try to discover how you can get closer to Hashem. And every single day, there has to be a new service. There has to be a new something that brings you to extra concentration and arouses a deeper love. And that applies to everything that we do in life. Okay, let's give an example. A person's married, comes home, and every single day, it's the same exact thing. Good morning, honey. Have a nice day. You go about your business and whatever, right? I know with my kids, every single day, it's hug and kiss and this. And, and then I see them when we come home. Hey, guys. If it just becomes the same boring routine, the kids are like, no, do you think Tati loves you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, he hugs and kisses us every single day. But if every, how did you do today in school? And you have to have some kind of an excitement and they see, Tati really cares. It's not just like he's going through the motions. Or with your wife, if it's just every day. That's why Erev Shabbos, you come in with flowers and you once in a while you write a note. You have to go a little bit extra because if not, it's like, you just, you know what? Maybe you think that's what I want to hear. So you're just doing the same thing over and over and over. So you got to go the extra mile in our personal relationships and our relationship with Hashem. That makes it meaningful. So we have to dig deep and go above our natural tendencies. The 101st time. In order to master the nature that is in the left part of the heart, the seed of the animal soul, which is full of the blood of the animal soul originating klipa, that's where the nature comes from. The power of his love enables him to transcend this nature. And this, to overpower one's animal soul, through a love of Hashem generated by meditation, is a perfect service of abanity. So we have to think, every day we have to think of different ways. How am I going to love Hashem even greater, even more? There has to be a further step above what comes naturally and what feels comfortable to me. Or an alternative type of service is to arouse a revealed state of the love of Hashem found hidden in the heart. Thereby to control the nature that is in the left part of the heart. This too is called service of Hashem. Although in perfect service, this is service of Hashem. You're working on it and you're striving to. It, there has to be another step. It can't just be the same thing that you did yesterday. There has to be a little bit of extra effort. And if the, yesterday you did that extra effort, then today has to be even more. What effort? To wage war against his nature and inclination by arousing the love hidden in his heart. But if there's no if, if there's no war that he's waging, if he just comes to davening, he sits down, he opens book, blah 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 blah. I'm done. Take up the tefillin, run out the door. Come and go, come and go. It's like a revolving door. Like, you know, some people work nine to fives. And it's like, I was thinking of somebody in show. I'm not going to mention the name. He goes to work. And that's the kind of work that he does. It's pretty, it's pretty much the same thing. Every single day, every single week, pretty much the same. Because you're working for a certain company and you just have to crunch the numbers every single day. And that's fine. That's fine. As far as that work is concerned, I'm saying it's tough to be motivated to do anything, but that's what that work entails. He comes there. He looks over the invoices. He punches some numbers. He sends the bills. He receives the money. He does a P&L. Everything is out. Boom, he sends it in. He's not He's not moving up the ladder. That's that's his work, and he's fine with it. He has a good, he has a good, uh, what's what's the, you know, he has a good package, and he's happy. His avayda comes during his service of Hashem, to and from work, who he's going to meet there and everything else. But the actual work is very, just, it's mundane. mundane. And he's been doing it for 20 plus years. The same exact thing. So we have to make sure that when we serve Hashem, it doesn't become like that. Wake up in the morning, I say, I say my Dani. No, when you say my Dani, be thankful, Takadish Baruch Hu. He gave you another chance because you didn't fulfill your, fulfill your mission yesterday. And he trusts in you that today you're going to do a better job. And you're going to meet somebody and inspire somebody. And guess what? That somebody may be you. Because you look in the mirror and you say, you know what? I know I can do better. 
and you push yourself a little bit more. But if you don't wage that battle and you don't push yourself a little bit more and you're not engaging in even smaller struggles and arousing love when you study or when you learn or whether you're doing service of Hashem in any way, if it's just the same pattern, he gets up, he says, Maidan, he washes his hands, he comes to Sholi Davins, he learns the basic stuff, he goes home. Then he does not get credit and he's called he who serves him not. Like one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Or Mamish, let me just finish this one thought. To be designated one who serves Hashem, the Benini has to be in the battle on the battlefield. The Benini has to engage in the struggle. So next time you get a challenge from your evil inclination and you're fighting it, then it's difficult and it's tough and you feel like, did I succeed or not? And you and you have a moment of bliss and uh, you know what? I think I got him, but then you have a setback. Don't feel bad because you're in the battle. And that's either through love of Hashem that's born of meditation, thinking about it, or it's a love that's aroused, which is hidden inside you. But you're fighting it. That is service of Hashem of Abedini. We have the opportunity to break our nature. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, I can do it. I'm not just going to go by my day. It's not going to be the same as yesterday and the day before and the day before. The more we feel like doing it, the more we have to do. And at the moment, it is not about you. It's about your calling. It's not what I'm, it's not what I need, but what am I needed for? And Hashem is trusting you to fulfill your God-given mission only you can do. And as far as the tunnels, if you want to hear more about the tunnels, come to Shul tomorrow. I'm going to speak about it. Have a great day. We're going to have more discussion here, but it's hard. The microphone doesn't pick it up. So if you want to hear the in inside inner circle discussion, you got to come in person to this year. Have a wonderful day and a good Shabbos.